This video is about the XGRIDS Lixel. Shown here is the Kitty K1, which is the cheaper, lower power LiDAR option, and the L2 Pro with the HESI spinning puck LiDAR. All of the data sets captured and shown in this video were captured using the Kitty K1. And the Kitty and the L2 Pro both share the same two 48 megapixel cameras, which are what is used to generate the 3D Gaussian splats. Getting started scanning, the total collection time ended up being right at seven minutes. I gave the project a name and checked some settings last minute. RTK was not used for this job, and so all of the results are going to be relative. The collection recording that you're seeing is sped up four times. I ended up circling around the truck three or four times. You'll see me trying to collect low, medium, and high angles, and I'm using a monopod screwed to the scanner to help with stability. I'm also doing my best to reverse directions because there are two cameras, one on the left and one on the right, and I want to let each side see all objects. Once the collection is complete, we can view a sparse point cloud of the area we collected. For regular LiDAR point cloud processing and adding GCPs, the Lixel devices use a different program called Lixel Studio. And for these 3D Gaussian splats, we use Lixel CyberColor. So you see me naming the project and pointing the software at the raw folder. I tested the standard and slow settings, processing them both with low PPR, and you can see the difference between the two. It, for this example and this test, it probably isn't worth doubling the processing time. Prior to collection, I added a number of real-world objects, like a 24-inch level and a square and a measuring tape that we will use. I also added some sticky targets. For these two sticky targets and spray-painted ground control point that you'll see me measuring, I have GPS RTK measurements or visual RTK measurements from a GPS receiver. Here we end up with a measurement of 63.40 inches. And we will go ahead and measure from this lower sticky target to a spray painted ground control point on the ground. This sticky target was placed 
along a collar on the chain link fence post. And so I was able to measure it with the GPS receiver using tilt. This spray painted ground control point was measured without tilt using the bipod. We ended up with a measurement of 291.44 inches, and I also included the real-world dimensions of all of the known objects. The Lixel Cyber Color Visualizer has this avatar or game character that you can walk around using the WASD keys. And you can view this same data set in the link below in the description. And to see it in the same quality as I'm seeing, you need to change the settings at the top. you can switch the visualizer view to the point cloud. The Lixel Cyber Color tool also lets you record a video with keyframes. So what you're seeing here is a number of keyframes that I set. And when I press play, I can record a video showing off the data set. We can also import the project, exporting it from the Lixel Cyber Color and importing it into a video game design engine or 3D design engine like Unity or Unreal Engine, two separate softwares. Both Unity and Unreal Engine have plugins for tools or softwares like Autodesk Revit that would let an architect export their designs as meshes and models as shown here. This 3D model can be dropped, rotated, and scaled in place anywhere in the collected scene. I was able to find other free map markers, and there are tons of paid assets that you can add into the 3D scans. This is an exciting new technology. We still have a lot to learn about the different workflows we would need to use to extract useful survey data from it. And we can see that on a small scale, the results are impressive. 